Hi, my name is Dan and I want to show you how to modify the SciTech ProFlight yoke to eliminate an annoying dead zone problem. I've been simming for years and I'm also a real world pilot. I've got a great simulator setup, it's been absolutely entertaining and it's been very educational of course to contribute to my real world uh, flying. Um, however, one of the products that I use, the SciTech yoke, has an annoying problem. It's driven me crazy for years. And I can't believe I waited this long to actually fix the problem. Um, so rather than go out and get a really super expensive yoke that would probably clear up the problem, um, I decided that I wanted to tackle this issue myself and fix the problem. So the issue is that some models of the SciTech yoke have a bad firmware design. It's not a registry issue, it's not a driver issue, it's not a calibration issue. There is simply a bad firmware in the SciTech which misreads the potentiometers that read the roll and pitch inside the yoke. So, what does that mean? So when I'm rolling to the left or to the right of center, five degrees, left or right, or pitching forward or backward five degrees from the center on the yoke, there's a complete dead zone. There's no reaction on the simulator. For the longest time, I thought this was an issue in the way that the sim was reacting to the yoke itself or a problem in the driver set. That's not the case for some of these yokes. It's a bad firmware. So what am I going to do to fix it? Well, it's pretty simple. I'm going to get an electronic board joystick interface called a Leo Bodnar 0836A installed into this yoke, which is going to read the potentiometer for the roll and the pitch and send the signal separately from the SciTech yoke to the PC, and this should alleviate the problem. The links for that board are here in this YouTube video, so you shouldn't have any trouble finding it. Now, if you're in the warranty period of your SciTech yoke, I don't necessarily recommend doing this modification. You might want to contact SciTech and find out if you can get a replacement for your unit. Now, on the other hand, if you're outside of the warranty, and I know that thousands of you are outside of this warranty, and you might be handy with a soldering iron and basic electronics, you can do this modification. You can get this yoke opened up, you can fix the problem, close it up, and be back in action in under an hour. So, without further ado, I'm going to show you what the problem is, and then I'm going to show you how to fix it. So let's get on with that. Okay, so let's have a look at the SciTech ProFlight yoke issue that I've been talking about. As I mentioned, some electronic boards and their firmware have this particular issue of a dead zone, both on the roll and on the pitch. So let's start with the roll. So if you're looking at the screen, you'll see that my yoke in the real world here is moving over, and I'm not getting a reaction until I'm about at this point, and then it starts to react. And then I've got full read all the way through to the left. Now as I come back across, you'll see that dead zone through the center, and when I'm about five, six, seven degrees over to the right, I start to get a reaction again, and then it's working fine. If you look at it through the full th through motion, it doesn't look like it's that big a deal necessarily, but through the center, you can see I've got quite a bit of play here and absolutely nothing happening. Now let's have a look at the elevator. So it's not quite as pronounced as on the roll, but it's there as well. So if you see, there's not much reaction there. I have to push through before I start to see a reaction on the elevator, but through the center, nothing's happening. So as you can see, with both the roll and the pitch, there's a pretty significant dead zone on this particular unit of the SciTech ProFlight yoke. Let's get to work, let's fix this problem. All right, so we're back with you, and what we have already here is the opened up ProFlight yoke uh, from SciTech. Um, I'm not going to show you how to open it up. There are tons of videos out there that show you how to do that, and uh, it's fairly straightforward. It's just a bunch of screws on the back side, and presto, it's opened up. Probably the first thing you're going to notice on the inside of my yoke is it doesn't look like the inside of your yoke, possibly, because I've done some modifications uh, prior to this um, add-on that I'm going to do today. And that modification, of course, namely here, is in terms of the spring system. I have completely removed the SciTech stock spring system and changed it for the elastic bands. Once again, this is something you can find on YouTube if it is something you want to do. Um, I find that it improves the motion of the yoke much better and you don't have that detente zone in the center with the pitch which makes it very very difficult to control an air craft on flare. So on with what we're about to do which is to change up the way the pitch and roll are read by the computer. So as you can see here on the side take yoke there's a potentiometer here. This one is for the pitch. 
and a, poten and a potential meter right here, and this one is for the roll. What we're going to do is we're going to disconnect these lines to these potentiometers that go to the original SciTech electronic board. And what we're going to do is we're going to replace it with the BU0836 uh, joystick board from Leo Bodnar. And uh, it's going to be fairly straightforward. As you can see, on the potentiometer there are three wires going to each one. On the left-hand side here, or on the right-hand side, I should say, from your perspective, is a yellow line, and that's a plus 5 volts. On the other extremity is a black line, which is the ground. And in the center, this red one is the output going back to the board. It seems a little counterintuitive. You would think black being round, red being the positive voltage, and perhaps the yellow being the signal going back, but that's not the case. The yellow is indeed plus 5, the center is the signal, and the black is the ground. On the Leo Bodnar bar, uh, board, I bought these wire connectors from his website. They already come set up like this, so with a black, with a white, and with a red. So the black is the ground, the red is the plus 5 volts, and the white is the signal. And they conveniently just snap right onto the board, and you can see on the board here, that we have the ground input and plus 5. This will just connect like this. And what you have is a nice convenient way to not have to solder anything directly to the Leo Bodnar board. And at the other end, I'm going to take these leads and attach them to the potential meters here using my soldering iron. The other thing we're going to look at is how this is connected up to the PC. This is a standard USB. I'm going to drill a hole in the back of the yoke to pass a USB cable that plugs into this. And that will give a separate USB connection from this yoke. So in fact, the yoke will run with two USB connections. One for the original SciTech board, and that will be the remainder of the buttons and switches of this yoke. And for the pitch and roll, this new board will have its own USB connector going out, which you can connect to your PC, to a hub, or even to the back side of the yoke itself that has extra ports on it. The other thing we're going to look at is how I'm going to attach the board. I've done a little bit of checking on this in advance. And right where this board, the original SciTech board, attaches, there's a screw, a couple of screws retaining it. I'm just going to pull out one of these screws, and as you can see on this board, there's a hole on the corner. And I'm just going to screw that board right to this spot right here. And that'll make a nice secure place, and the case closes up very nicely on the yoke without uh, causing any conflict. So, without much further ado, I'm going to get to work. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these existing lines from the uh, ProFlight yoke board so that they are no longer connected. solder from this one. I just wanted to carefully insulate this first set of wires and put a little label on it to indicate what it is. So this is in fact the roll. So I used a little bit of electrical tape to insulate the wires and then I put a, uh, a label maker label on here that I printed out. I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not. That says roll. So now I'm going to proceed on removing the three other solder connected uh, wires right over here. Okay, so now I've insulated these wires so that there are no contacts between them and we don't have any conflict on the, uh, the side tech board. And I've appropriately labeled this one pitch, so I've got pitch. Now I've got roll over here. And I've also released the wires from over here that were uh, hot glued down to the top of this potential meter. I'm going to see how I'll deal with that with the new wires afterwards. But for now what I wanted to do is liberate these wires. I can simply just tuck these away a little bit later on down over here. They won't be in any conflict whatsoever with the movement of the yoke itself, so that's not going to be a problem. Now, earlier on, I did a little quick check about dry fitting the, uh, the BU0836 board right here to the, um, the screw post here. 
and of course the USB line will connect up over here and will come out the back. So I do need to foresee putting a, a hole in the back of this uh, plastic casing so that the wire can go out the back. So I've decided that rather than go ahead right now with the soldering job over here to the potential meter, that I'm going to go ahead and cut this hole open now just to have a nice clean um, finish on this. And uh, if I do that first, I can vacuum out any debris from the inside of the yoke casing before I proceed with putting in the board and soldering up the connections here or soldering up the connections and installing the board. So I'm going to take care of that now. I've got uh, one of these handy dandy uh, battery operated cutters. Pretty noisy. And I'm going to use that to cut a hole on the back here so that it's at least wide enough to fit a USB cable out the back. Alright, so I've identified that I'm going to make a hole right here. There's a screw post right there. And then this is the back corner here. I'm going to put this right about here. And it'll be just uh, just deep enough for the wire to get through. So this is going to be noisy, so bear with me. I don't know if you can see that well on the uh, video. Let me just bring this up a little closer here. And you'll see that I've scored in two cuts here. And now I'm just going to take a pair of pliers and break this piece out. There's no point in trying to use an electric guy. Uh, tool like that to try and score across here, it's just going to make a mess. So let's see, I've got this right here, let's see if we can uh, break this out nice and clean. There we go. Doesn't have to be perfect of course, I'll, I'll clean this up a little bit off camera to get uh, this liberated here, but as you can see very easily, I'll just use the back side of these, use the USB line, you'll see that it'll be able to pass through the very, very, very simply, just the, the thickness of a one uh, USB cable. Alright, so now that we've made that uh, hole in the back here, I've uh, taken care of cleaning up the inside of the casing so that there's no uh, plastic debris left here. Um, I'm just a little bit bothered actually by these wires that are loose here, so I'm a huge, huge fan of tie wraps. So. I'm just going to fold this over right here. I'm just going to connect it up to this uh, cable that's right here. Put a tie wrap around it like that. Zip it up so that it's out of the way. And voila! Just cut off this excess piece of tie wrap like that. And now that's out of the way. So, what are we going to do next? Well, before we install the actual PC board itself inside, I'm going to solder up the wires to the uh, potentiometer. Now, if you recall, when I showed you this, uh, it's red, white, and blue, and when we lined it up on the uh, USB board itself, red was the plus 5, black was the ground, and white was the signal. So, what we're going to do is in that order, and as mentioned earlier, set up black ground on this side here. We're going to set up the white in the center and the red on this far side over here. Alright, so we're going to continue on. What we're going to do next is attach the, uh, the lines to uh, the potentiometers themselves. And I recommend uh, pre-tinning the ends of the leads, of course, uh, with your soldering iron and some solder. It just makes it uh, a lot easier to make the connection. Now, of course, having enough free hands to hold the wires and hold the solder and the soldering iron at the same time can be a little difficult. So my little trick is to take a little one of these clips here, and I'm going to just attach it along the plastic here like that, just so that I have access to my lines nice and free. I'm going to take my solder here and my soldering iron and just pretend these lines. So here's the red line. I'm going to put a solder on the end of it. There we go. The white line. A little bit of solder and the black line, a little bit of solder. 
Excellent. So now, take off my little clip here. We can start up. So if you remember, on this particular potentiometer, the black was on this side, the side closest to me. So. Alright, that's nice. And it's hooked up. So, my plus 5, my signal line, and my ground are now attached to that potentiometer. Now I'm going to do the same with a second set for the roll potentiometer. So we've got black, white, red. So, now we have these two sets of lines nicely soldered up to the board. And all we have to do now is attach the PC board itself inside here where I mentioned I would do earlier. So I'm going to remove this screw here. So can you see that right here? The screw here is the one closest to me. I'm going to remove a little black screw. Careful, it's tiny. You don't want to lose it like I just did. I think I've got a magnet on the end of this screwdriver, so I got it back. So we're good. And I'm going to pre-thread it through the board here. It will just make my life a little bit easier in terms of attaching it to that post inside the yoke casing. So here it is right here. Let's get that through like so. Alright, so that worked no problem. You'll see from a perspective which, uh, which screw point I chose. It's up here in this corner closest to the USB port itself because I want the USB port pointing backwards towards the end of the case so that I can get my line out. So now I'm just going to line this up with the hole that's holding the other PC board and screw that on. And we're going to leave a little bit of a gap. You can see that I can, if I leave the screw loose, I can move this about left and right. And we don't want it all the way over here because it might conflict with the side tech board. So I'm going to give it a little bit of an angle before I screw it down so that there's no chance of an electrical contact between this board and the side tech board. And as I clean this up later, I'll determine whether or not I'm going to insert some sort of a, an insulating pad between these two boards just to make sure that they don't touch each other. So, now to connect these up, all I have to do is put them on the board. Now, there are three pins, and I showed them to you earlier, ground, input, and plus five. So that means the black, white, and the red. And then there's a whole set going down this way. There's eight. This board can actually take up to eight different potentiometers. Now, of course, with pitch and roll, I only have two. These other ones in the back of this board are four switches. So I'm actually not going to be using most of the functionality of this board. I'm only going to be using two axes, the pitch and roll. So I'm going to connect here. This is the uh, pitch roll here. I'm going to connect it up to the board in the first position. And I'm going to connect up the roll in the second position. Why in that order? It really doesn't matter because once you play with it uh, on the screen in Windows, you can select whichever you want for pitch and roll. I just like to remember it this way. First one was pitch, second one is roll because that's what we tend to say in aviation terms, pitch and roll. So now this is securely connected to the board. I've got a lot of excess wire. So I'm going to do some cleanup here with some uh, tie wraps and we'll get back to you in just a second. All right, so back with you. Um, I've now uh, tie wrapped this up so it's nice and neat and clean. So you can see the board is securely connected right here. And I've tie wrapped up the uh, potentiometer lines over here. They're not going to conflict with anything. So I don't think I'm going to proceed with fastening these wires to the top of this potentiometer with hot glue like the original lines were. I don't see any reason for it. There's a lot of room in this case, and I don't think there's going to be any conflict. Of course, if there ever was, I'll just open it up and I'll fix that. 
Um, so the next thing I'm going to do before actually reassembling this and of course attaching this USB cable here is I'm going to do some testing. So I am going to connect a USB cable up to this port here and I'm going to plug it back into my PC and do some testing. So bear with me on that. We'll show you some of the tests and see how this works out for the pitch and roll access with this new board. Okay, so uh, now that we've got it wired up, what we're going to do is hook it up to the PC and uh, see what kind of results we get. So, well, in fact, I've kind of cheated. So I've already hooked up the USB to the um, USB joystick uh, card here, the BU0836. And this line is going out, and I've got it plugged into my PC. Now, up on the Windows screen, you'll see that the BU0836A interface is now installed. So I'm just going to double click that and it says that everything's fine. I'm going to right click it and I'm going to go to game controller settings. Just bring that over here. Minimize this. And I've got my sidekick ProFlight yoke set up over here and the BU0836A interface here. Let's just double click on that. And so, what you can see here is the typical um, joystick interface here. There's no software to install whatsoever. It's native to Windows. I've got Windows 10 and it works very, very fine. Now, I've got the uh, yoke down here, and I'm going to try some movements, uh, some roll and some pitch. So, let's look it up here, and they are moving around just fine. And I've got my roll here, and the roll here working just fine. Now the one thing I did tell you earlier on is that I had sort of arbitrarily connected these connectors in the first pin slot and the second pin slot saying I would go logically pitch and roll. On my first attempt at plucking it into the PC, I found out that it was actually the reverse. So in fact, the first set of pins here are for the roll, and the second set of pins are for the pitch. So that's a correction from the video earlier on. So I'll put that in the notes, but do remember to connect it this way. Okay, so now that we've uh, tested out the yoke with the computer, we know that this, uh, this board works fine. It's connected up fine. And everything's nice and tucked away here. So what we're going to do is start closing things up. Now, the first thing I want to do is this USB cable line that's attached to the board that's going through this hole. I don't want it to tug at this. So I'm going to put a tie wrap around the end here so that it's got a stop point. So let's just get one of those on here so that there is no chance that we can do any damage when the USB cable itself is tugged on. So let's just Tighten that right up over here, nice and snug. Cut off the excess like that. And that will, once this case is closed up like that, it'll stop here. This will not move, which is nice and uh, secure and should give us some carefree operation later on. In fact, it does look like it's time to close up the case. Bingo, everything closes nice and tight and even. So the USB board itself is not uh, jamming up against the, uh, the case. And if I turn this up over here, oh, I see I've got a little bit of play here. I'm just gonna close that up here. There we go. And you can see this cable is coming out nice and clean from here. And once this is all screwed together, this will not be able to pull out because I put that tie wrap on the inside that stops it from being tugged at. Now, as I mentioned before, the other end of this USB cable, you have choices. You can connect this to your PC directly. You can plug it into a hub. Or, on the back of the SciTech, there are three USB ports. If you're not using one of them, there's nothing wrong at all plugging this in just like that. Now it is a good idea with these yokes to use the plus 5 volt adapter that you can buy. It's 1.5 amps 
center tap is positive, you can get it from SciTech, you can buy them online, you can find them on eBay, you can find them on Amazon. Really good thing to get one of these, plug it in here, it supplies a nice steady 1.5 amps of 5 volts to this yoke, which is great if you have other things plugged into it. So, I'm going to seal this all up and get all of my simulator reassembled and we'll do some testing. Alright, so we've got the ProFlight yoke back together again with our electronic board in place, everything plugged in, everything reassembled here. Let's have a look at how well our roll is working. I've got a nice linear flow all the way through, left to right. And let's check out that dead center. Is there a dead zone anymore? No, there isn't. I'm getting an absolute reaction for every slight movement that I make through this roll axis. So, totally smooth, left and right, and I've got little subtle movements right through the center, absolutely no dead zone. Now let's have a look at the elevator. So let's have a look. Even the smallest movement has a reaction, both in the virtual cockpit and on that elevator. And I've got a nice smooth movement all the way through. Back to front and in that center, absolutely no dead zone. So I've got complete smooth movement right through the elevators and ailerons and none of that dead zone anymore. And that's how we fix this yoke.